Well, today we make the case that the Los Angeles Angels need to sign Xander Bogarts. Now we're going to ask a few questions. Does he fit? What kind of upgrade would he be offensively and defensively? And Johnny, the most important question, how much will he cost? All that and more. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels first listen of the day. Zen Bogarts might be a lot of money, but this show is always free and available on all platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, you can help the show out with a like, a comment, a subscription, and you can click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. Thanks for being here with us for this edition of Locked on Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Mike, you and I have been Angel fans for years, and so every offseason, we speculate at what the Angels might do. And today, we're making the case. We're making the case for Xander Bogarts to come in and play shortstop. We're going to talk about his offense, his defense, weigh the pros and cons, if the Angels can even afford him this season. So we're going to start with the offense, and we're going to tell you why Xander Bogarts will be a significant upgrade offensively from what the Angels had in 2022. Mike, why don't you start us out with the de- details? All right. Well, I, I took some details, some stats, not just from this last season, but I took details and stats from the last four seasons. Let's talk OPS. Here's his OPS last four seasons. 939, mm-hmm. 867, 863, 833. Wow. So this guy is hitting for some power. He is getting on base and he's making contact. He hits for power. He hits for average. He's an on base guy. John, here's two stats that you love the BABIP, which mm-hmm. is batting average with balls in play. He has a mm-hmm. 362 BABIP. And then his weighted runs created plus love that was one. 134 last season. That was yes. the second highest in his career. And so Xander Bogarts, I think, is a really, really good signing for us mm-hmm. offensively. And we needed some offense last season. And the speculation is we're going to be back. Like the offense is going to be back, right? Mm-hmm. Like we shouldn't struggle like we did in this last season. But I think having Bogarts on our team and Bogarts playing shortstop will actually really help this offense. I think he slides in nicely in this lineup. I think he can bat high in the lineup, bat in the middle of the lineup, and I even think he could bat in the six through nine spots in the lineup. I think this would be a really great bat for us. And and he's a young guy. He's he's only 30. And so it's not like we're getting some guy on the – on the tail end of his career, which is Mm -hmm. often what we do sign when we're trying to upgrade our offense. And so I think this would be a great move for us. He's obviously, he's an infielder, plays shortstop. He can play some third base as Mm -hmm. well. And so if Anthony Rendon is out, we can move his bat over to third and then we can have somebody else play shortstop while, while that's happening, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the BABIP stands out to me because 300 is average. Yeah. And I imagine with the lack of shifting that's going to happen in 2023 batters who can put a ball in play and get a high average expected average on that are going to find it advantageous this season, especially when you're hitting line drives, those things are going to fall right in for base hits. And if you don't have those defenders lined up on one side of the field or the other, you're really going to see a lot more offense out of a player. So that bad 362 gets me excited I'm also excited about his OPS, Mike, because the Angels ranked dead last at the shortstop (laughs) position in 2022. That was a 557 on base plus slugging. Much of that was Andrew Velasquez. Yes. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with Velasquez, considering he might just start batting exclusively from the right side. But really, at this point, any upgrade you can make at shortstop is going to pull the Angels out of that worst position. Again, a 557 OPS that's number 30 in the league out of 30 teams. And (laughs) having Xander Bogarts in there with Anthony Rendon, Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, 
it just extends that lineup tremendously. It's incredible yep. to think about the power that he offers, the average that he offers, getting on base, of course, that on base plus slugging is the on base percentage plus his ability to hit doubles, triples, and home runs. So you're adding a quality bat. I understand possibly money is the issue here, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But when it comes to adding a bat like this, this is still a high quality bat. I really think that Xander Bogarts is going to serve this lineup well. He's going to serve this team well and is somebody that the Angels could and should splurge for if they're going to make a splash in this offseason. So those are my thoughts on Xander stepping into this lineup. Mike, where do you see him? I know you mentioned it briefly, but if you had to place him, if you're making an opening day lineup, where does Xander Bogart sit for you? Listen, I, I've been an advocate for Mike Trout to lead off for a couple of reasons. Oh, interesting. One, the guy is going to get on base, right? He's always going to draw a walk. He's always going to be pitched to very carefully. And so I, I think Mike should lead off and, and mm. then having somebody like a Xander Bogarts behind him, I think would be really, really wise. Maybe Shohei Otani batting second and then Bogarts batting third. Now mm. the way that the lineup actually will probably pan out will be Taylor Ward, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. I think that you could put Xander in there at four, maybe mm. five, because then you're going right, right lefty with Shohei and then another righty with Xander Bogarts and then maybe an Anthony Rendon or a Jared Walsh. You can go left, right, left, mm -hmm. right. I think that there's a lot of options with this guy. That's what I really like about having him in our lineup is that he's not stuck in a particular place. Like you, yes. you have to put him at lead off or you have to bat him ninth or he's going to have to be in this part of the lineup. I think with Bogarts, you can put him anywhere. And I think if you actually put him maybe at, four or five in this lineup, he's going to knock in some mm -hmm. runs because he does make contact. And that honestly might be the most ideal spot, right? Because the top of the lineup was on base <laughs> a whole lot. Yeah. And then the bottom of the lineup did nothing with sure. that. And there were injuries and we admit that we saw that, but I think when you have somebody like Bogarts hitting four or five, you, you can almost guarantee that he's going to make contact and perhaps even, push a runner to third base or maybe mm -hmm. even knock a runner mm -hmm. in. And that's what you, that's what you need in the four five and six. You want people that can make contact. that can hit sack flies that can move runners over and, and aren't going to just have the top of the lineup get stuck on base. I mean, how many times did we see Ward and Otani and trout on base? And then nothing happened after that, especially after the injuries took place. And I think with Bogarts at four or five or six, there's an opportunity to really make some, big hits, some some key plays, and utilize his bat in a really, really powerful way. What, what do you think? Where would you slot him? I would in? like to see him behind Mike Trout and in front of Shohei Otani. So maybe that's a two, three, four kind of situation because exactly what you said, Trout is going to draw the walks. Trout can hit for power, and he is hitting for more power these days, and he's got more yeah. of an uppercut to that swing these days. And with Bogarts, just the fact that he hits for an average – and he can hit for power, you're going to knock in some runs with Mike Trout in front of you. You're going to get on base for Shohei Otani behind you. And I think that yep. if you rely on Shohei's power bat in the cleanup spot, look, he's he's a home run machine. He mashes when he's up there. And if you got runners on for him in front of Shohei Otani, like Xander Bogarts, man, you're just going to multiply his RBI opportunities tenfold if you've got Trout and Bogarts in front of Shohei Otani. So I'd like to see something in that order. I'd even be willing to flip Bogarts and then Trout behind him because mm -hmm. of Trout's ability to get on base and drive runners in. So it's really anyone's game. I really like adding his bat to this lineup. Again, it significantly improves the OPS rating we had at shortstop. Really, at the end of the day, any step up from what we had last season will be an improvement. But this right. would be an incredible, significant improvement. Well, coming up on Locked on Angels, how much will Xander Bogarts actually cost? We know that there's going to be a cost to that. We know that we're paying Trout and Otani and Rendon. So is this something the Angels can do? Would they even be willing to pay him a significant amount of money? We're going to talk that through. But first, Johnny, Locked on Angels is brought to you by Bet Online. 
It is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, as you know, is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, analysis, anything that you need. Bet Online has it for you. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. There's a lot of football being played, and of course, basketball, soccer, and even esports as well. BetOnline.net has it all. They've got podcasts you can listen to to get those betting fixes and information that you're looking for. And you can find those on bet, bet online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Of course, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online is where the game starts. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. Now for your second listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter to the most powerful Wonderful, biggest stories in sports. You can go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today is available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. So we've covered Xander Bogarts on offense, and now we want to talk to you why he's going to be a significant upgrade on defense and will slot in very well to that infield that's going to be made up of guys like Anthony Rendon and David Fletcher and Luis Renjifo, possibly Levon Soto. And of course, you got Jared Walsh over at first base as it stands right now before the Angels get into their free agent moves. So we're going to talk about his defense and why Xander Bogarts would be a significant improvement on that side of the field. Mike, run those stats by us. All right. Well, we know that Squid was really strong at short. We'll throw those stats out at you in just a moment. And so... The reason why we bring that up, though, is because we need somebody that is going to slot in and play really strong defense. And you Mm -hmm. and I think that Bogarts is that guy. He had a 983 fielding percentage last season, which means that he wasn't making too many errors. He was really strong Mm -hmm. wherever he played in the infield, third base and at short. At shortstop specifically, he had four defensive runs saved. And here's, here's the thing. This was the first time the first season Hmm. that Bogarts was positive in the defensive runs saved department, which means Johnny he's improving (laughs) as he grows as a baseball player, right? Like we're inheriting somebody who worked on his defense. And this is important because squid last year was really strong, really strong at shortstop. Mm -hmm. Johnny talk about his defensive runs saved and his fielding percentage. Yeah, Squid had an 11 defensive runs saved total in 2022, which is, uh, if you're watching every game and you're just doing the eye test, you can totally see that that's the case. But he had a 973 fielding percentage. So while he was saving, you know, the difference of seven runs between him and Xander Bogarts, the regular fielding percentage was down just by 10%. And that's not a very significant number. However, I think the key here is that they're comparable in terms of defense, and you're not going to lose anything too much if you slot Bogarts in at that spot. If you're worried about Squid's glove not being there every day, don't worry. He'll more than make up for it with his bat, that being Bogarts, and his defense is quite capable as well. His ultimate zone rating, which quantifies a player's entire defensive performance, takes into account errors and his range and his arm, if he's an uh, an outfielder, and of course his double play ability, zero is the average. Bogarts had a 4.9 ultimate zone rating last season. So again, strong numbers there, and that number that quantifies it, the UZR, ultimate zone rating, shows us that he was significantly above average there. So he's a great defender, and we're not going to lose much if we move on from squid playing every day, yeah, which I don't think is the intention. And I don't think it will be the intention going into 2022. I think the angels will rather use somebody like Fletcher at shortstop, maybe run at second base and squid is off the bench. But if the angels are going to go for somebody to play that middle infield defensively, you can't go wrong with Xander Bogarts, Mike. Right. No. And here's the, here's the good news. Last year, he's throwing to Bobby Dahlbeck at first base with the Boston Red Sox. If he signs with us, 
he's throwing to Jared Walsh at first base. And Walsh yes. is like, like you've said multiple times, Walsh is over there like a ba- as a ballerina. I mean, this guy yeah, has got yoga, yoga pants. pants on, right? He's, he's stretching <laughs> out, he's dancing around and he is such a great defender over there. And so I think that Bogarts is actually going to improve even more on the field with Jared Walsh out there. And we know that David Fletcher is actually a really great defensive second baseman. And so yes. to play up the middle with him, that would actually be a whole lot of fun to watch those two guys play. And then if we could just stick in the infield for a moment, Anthony Rendon yes. is pretty solid at third base. And yes. as much as we have been upset that he hasn't been in games, when he's in there, we love his bat, but mm-hmm. it's really his glove, John, that sets him apart of anybody else that actually comes in and fills in for him. And so that up the middle defense would be great. That left side of the field would be great. I think Bogarts is a really great move. And then this adds a lot of depth to our team. We've talked about that. Perry's talked about that. Mm-hmm. We're, we're squits coming off the bench, but you also have Renhifo coming yes. off the bench. And yes. you've got four players that can rotate up the middle defense, shortstop and second base with Fletch, Bogarts, Squid, and Renjifo, and then they also can slide over and play third. And we haven't even mentioned Levon Soto, who right. who knows where he's going to be at. And I, I think that, man, this just really sounds like a great deal for the Angels, not just offensively, but defensively, especially as Xander Bogarts has improved. And last season's an indication that he's really been working on his defense. And I believe he could carry that into Anaheim next season. It would be great to see that left side of the infield, Anthony Rendon, and Xander Bogarts together, throwing it to David Fletcher at second base, who's throwing it to first base, Jared Walsh. And that's the thing, when when a defender throws the play, if if the first baseman can't scoop it, that's going to be an air right. on somebody like the shortstop. And we all right. know uh, uh, Walsh over there at first can pick it out of the dirt, man. And he has shown that time and time again. He's a great glove over there. Hopefully he has healthy heading into this off season. But can you imagine Bogarts thrown over to first at Jared Walsh, turning around, hitting a home run as the angels step up to the plate. I really like where this is going and we hope you like it too. All right. So we talked about how he is great offensively Xander Bogarts. We've made the case that he would be a great bat in our lineup. We've made the case that he'd be a great defender at short, and if he had to slot over to third base at times, he'd be great over there as well. John, let's talk now about the pros and cons of this signing. And in fact, Mm -hmm. the pros and cons are similar. And so why don't you start us and talk about the pros first? Yeah, there's a lot of big free agent shortstops on the market. Uh, Let's go through. You've got Trey Turner, who is estimated to make 33 million. You've got Carlos Correa who opted out of his twins contract. He's estimated to make about 31 million. He did have 35 million with the twins. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting uh, dilemma there for whoever signs him. Bogarts is the third cheapest on the market. He's estimated to have a $29 million contract and Dansby Swanson would come in below him at fourth with 24 million. Million, So you're not going out and getting the most expensive free agent shortstop who's out there. We all know that money is tight with the Angels, and that's their own doing. They're the ones who are sticking to a very tight budget. They have the money to spend. They just won't go near the luxury tax. But you and I have estimated that we'll probably see them stay around the 180 mark. But if they want to make a splash, they'll probably have to go to about the 200,000 mark which puts them about 33 million away from the luxury tax and I think Bogarts fits in quite well in terms of money. It's going to be a move that the Angels make that's going to make a lot of press, it's going to get a lot of attention. And we all know Bogarts opted out of his Red Sox contract because he's seeking more money. And yeah. if he's not going to be the guy in terms of the biggest dollars. I really think that this is a a reasonable expectation for the Angels. And we all know that the Angels like their one-year deals. I think Bogarts is somebody that you can bring around for a few years. You don't have to do a one and done like the Angels have been doing with, you know, these journeyman types. Bogarts is a guy who's going to stick around and that you want 
to stick around. And next year, money will likely not be an issue because we will have a new owner. There will right. be a new administration in place and Bogarts will hopefully be here as well. So again, he is not the most expensive shortstop on the free agent market right now. Seems like something the angels could possibly do. Talk about the cons, Mike. All right. Well, one of them is money. Can the angels yes. actually sustain <laughs> four players making 30 plus million dollars a year, trout Otani Rendon, and then Xander Bogarts. I don't think they get them for less than 30 million a year. I think that mm -hmm. they're going to, if it's 29, it's still close to 30 million. Right? right. And so I think this guy is, is going to cost some money. Can the angels sustain that? The concern would be that they wouldn't go and do anything else. And we know that we need another arm. We know that we need a left fielder and we know that we're going to need some bullpen help as well. Mm -hmm. Now they could get really creative. And we talked about this on yesterday's show. Maybe they bring in somebody to play first base on the cheap. Maybe it's a Jose Abreu or it's a, uh, Turner from from the Dodgers, and then they move Jared Walsh out to left field, right? Mm -hmm. Like that that could be an option. <laughs> I just don't think that that's going to be something that takes place. Justin Turner, by the way, not Trey. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, <laughs> didn't want to mix up our our Turners there. Yeah, another thing, Mike, that would be a con for the Angels. The qualifying offer is attached to Xander yes. Bogarts. The funny thing yes. is, nineteen and a half million. Obviously. He's going to reject it, and that's likely going – they had till today to decide, so I'm sure at some point you'll see the news that he turned it down if he hasn't done so already in the time that we've recorded and edited and put this out there. But again, <laughs> that qualifying offer would cost the Angels a second-round draft pick. It's similar to what happened with Noah Syndergaard. The Mets offered him a qualifying offer and the Angels paid him just a couple million more to sign him last season, and they were charged with the draft pick. So yeah. that means if the Angels do pick up Xander Bogarts, they would lose out on that draft pick. But yeah. it does bode well for winning right now, and that seems to be the emphasis for the Angels. Perry said he doesn't feel like they're that far away. Certainly, Xander Bogarts gets you that much closer to the playoffs, and like you said, He's got the ability to play third. He could play that shortstop position. There's lots of infield depth behind him. They might not, might not have the same bat that Bogarts does, but you know that if something happens to him, you have somebody certainly capable of stepping up into that role. So the final verdict here, Mike, I'll let you go first. Bogarts would be a great move for the Halos. Will they do this? And what do you think? Well, obviously he's going to be a great upgrade offensively. He'll be mm -hmm. a great upgrade defensively. We're not going to mm -hmm. lose anything with him in there. I think the question is going to be about money, John, and mm -hmm. that always seems to be where we land with the Angels. Will they do this? I'm I'm kind of in the middle of the road right here. I'm <laughs> red, yellow, green. I'm yellow because yeah. I, I would love to see them do this. I just don't know if they would prioritize this. And his his price point would probably price the Angels out. I think that there's a lot of pluses. There's a lot of wins. I think we've made a great case. And I would really be excited if Perry Manassian went after Xander Bogarts because he could be a really great shortstop for us for now and also for the future. And the Angels do have a history of having really strong shortstops. And when they mm -hmm. do, they end up being really, really good. We had a Dick Schofield. We had uh, uh, Gary DiSarcina. We, mm -hmm. we had Orlando Cabrera. We had David Eckstein. I mean, we've had really good shortstops and we've yes. won. And that's been a great indicator. Like if we have this position fulfilled and it's a good solid player, it usually shows us that the angels will be great. So I think that Bogarts would be a great move for the halos. I'm just, I'm just meh on if they'll actually make <laughs> that move. What do you think? Yeah. I'm thinking about where Bogarts would like to play. Yep. And if it is the AL West, well, we know the Rangers already have their middle infield. Oakland's not going to spend the money. The Astros have Jeremy Pena, who stepped up this season. Rookie and of, of course, you got the Mariners, who have J.P. Crawford, that seem to go back and forth on if they want to keep him there. So I don't imagine Bogarts will end up in the AL West, if not with the Angels. Now, Obviously, that leaves 25 other teams, well, 24, because he's not going back to Boston, unless they can renegotiate some sort of deal there. But it seems like he's ready to move on from the Red Sox. And I think the Angels are an ideal place to play. I think Southern California is a nice place to be. 
and it's a, certainly a change from living in, in Boston and it's freezing cold there. So he might enjoy that as well. So Xander, yeah. if you're watching, come to the angels, buddy, we'd love to have you. <laughs> Well, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. Now, for your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. They're sharing some of the biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. So what do you guys think about Xander Bogarts? Did we make the case? Did we give you all the pros and cons and the offense and defensive numbers that you needed to hear to convince you that he's a good fit here In Anaheim, let us know by commenting below on YouTube if you're watching there, or you can reach out to us at Lockdown Angels on Twitter. You can also get at us at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. We look forward to hearing from you and your thoughts about Xander Bogarts. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, the Angels were really not that far away from the playoffs last Hmm. year, Johnny, and you and I are going to give 13 reasons why we believe that (laughs) tomorrow. Unlocked on Angels. <laughs> uh, poor choice of words. <laughs> I'm doing a Netflix show over here. That's great. <laughs> All right, friends. We hope that you'll join us for that conversation. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Angels, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.